Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss Rapid Spanning Fee Protocol, RSPP, and as per standard, this is also known as IEEE 802.1W. So RSPP is actually an improved version of SPP. And uh, so this is an improved version. So most of the things that are the main things are same. For example, the root selection process is same. Root port selection process is also same. Designated port selection process is same. And in addition, each port is placed either in forwarding or blocking state. So this also happened in STP as well. But difference is that here the blocking state is known as a discarding state. Now, the question is that if STP can do the same job, then why actually we need our STP? So the job is to avoid layer to looping. Both of them can do the same job. Then why do we need RSTP? The simple reason is that RSTP actually reduces the convergence time for the network. What's convergence time? It means we discussed in a previous video as well that if any link in the network fails, then STP requires some time to recalculate everything. To recalculate means to find out the new root port, designated port. So it takes some time, and that time is known as convergence time. And in RSTP, this con convergence time has been reduced. It means this is RSTP is faster. In addition to that, there are certain ports which are configured in RSTP and those ports are known as alternate port and the backup ports. And these are the ports which are which can actually immediately change their state to forwarding state without any waiting time. In STP, when we had to change to the forwarding state, then we were uh, bound to wait for some time that was 15 seconds and 15 seconds but here we don't have to wait for any time and these ports can immediately change their state to forwarding state so in this way we also save the time the convergence time so this is also one of the improvement made in RSTP Now, for example, this is a network, and if there is a problem, for example, this link has been failed. And if, let's discuss first in STP, that what happens in STP. So in, in STP, if a link fails, then that particular switch, so this switch has been affected, and now this switch, so this switch has to wait as per rule, as per protocol. And this Waiting time is dictated or given by max age, and that is 10 times hello time, and that is 20 seconds. So in case of STP, we need to wait for 20 seconds. But in RSTP, that is 6 seconds. So 3 times hello time, so this is 6, six seconds, and if you remember, this hello time is 2 seconds, okay? So in this way, we also saved some time here for the convergence. In addition, the switches can also inquire neighboring switches about the problem. So if there is a problem with any of the switch, then these switches can negotiate, or they can talk with the neighboring uh, switches about the problem as well. So now, as we discussed that these, these, these important ports, these alternate ports, and the backup ports, which are going to be changed into the forwarding state without any delay. It means the port roles are also important, are the important um, things in RSTP. So let's discuss these port roles here. So we are going to discuss this STP port role as well now. For example, in STP, we had a port role that was a root port. So in RSTP also, we have the same role again. In STP, we had designated port. In RSTP, we also have designated port. In STP, we had non-designated port, also known as blocking port or the block port. But 
here we don't have any block port in our SCP but we have alternate port and a designated port so these are new port roles which are only in this RSTP and then we have the disabled port that is administratively the down port so the root port as you remember the root port is a is, is a is a port which is on the non root switch that has the least path to the root switch and the alternate port this is the new port so alternate port is a port that actually replaces the root port when the root port fails for example in this case this is the root port if this root port fails then this is the alternate uh, port which will take over the place of uh, root port here yeah? so this is the alternate port and then we have the designated port so designated port we have discussed in our previous video as well the so non-root non port that is, is still allowed to forward data frames and every LAN segment have a designated port. Backup port. This is also new port and this port actually replaces the designated port in case that specific port fails. For example here this is the backup port and if the designated port in this case if this fails then this backup port will take over the functionality or this will perform the functionality performed by designated port and then we have the disabled port that is administratively disabled port now in addition to that we also have port state differences in port states in STP as well as uh, RSTP so in STP if you remember we had this blocking state disabled state and listening state but in RSTP at least we only have the discarding state and the job of the discarding state is that this port actually discards incoming as well as outgoing data frames it means no data frames are allowed but they actually listen BPDU and then we have another state in RSTP that is learning state so that same in both of the uh, protocols so data frames are discarded in learning state as well but they actually learn the MAC address it means the MAC table is populated and finally the forwarding state that is similar so data frames are forwarded uh, so they are they can send as well as receive the data frames and they can also learn the MAC addresses as well so these are different four states now let's uh, discuss a simple scenario that what happens uh, for RSTP convergence so in RSTP convergence so STP selects root ports if we discuss STP exactly in the same way RSTP also selects root ports and RSTP also selects next best option for our uh, root port and that is alternate port as we discussed so in addition to this we have the alternate port as well and this is the this is the characteristics or this is specific to RSTP. There is no alternate port in STP. Yeah. So for example, what happens? This is the situation there. This is the alternate port, and this alternate port at the moment is in discarding state. So this discarding state. So what happens if a link fails? For example, this link failed. So this is root port fail. Then this switch has been affected and this switch actually exchanges RSTP messages with the neighbor switches and in this message they agree that this this port this alternate port will become the root port so through this through, through this message they exchange this information with each other and then this will become the root port and there will not be any waiting time here no learning no listening this will just change to the role uh, root port and then RSTP also changes this root port on this side to disable port role so this root port will change to disable and its state will become discarding state and this will happen without any waiting so the root port does not have to wait on listening and learning state we save the time by using this brick in RSTP. Now, what's the job of backup port? 
so we discussed the alternate port now backup port so in backup port actually exists on the designated switch here so this is the designated switch for example here so this is for instance just for understanding purpose at this moment this is not the root switch but this is the designated switch and this backup port and designated port exists on this designated switch clear and this backup port is in the discarding state. So let's discuss what happens in this case. What is the job of this backup port? So let's see. So the situation is that in this case, this designated switch is connected to the same collision domain. Same collision domain means they are connected with the hub. They call hub create single collision domain. So these two ports are connected with the hub. So they this backup port is used in this in such kind of special situation. So in this case, if this designated port, if this designated port fails, then this backup port actually convert, uh, convert is converted automatically to the designated port. And the, it, it is then converted into the forwarding state without any waiting. So you see, in such kind of situation, backup port is going to be the substitute for the designated port in case of designated switch when the designated switch is connected with the hub or a single collision domain. Okay. So this was a special situation when backup port can be used and then, and there's no waiting time. And then in addition to that in RSTP, we have RSTP port type. So in port type, the first port, first port type is point to point port. And these ports are ports which are connecting two devices or points. For example, in this case, this is one point and this is two points. These points are connected with these ports. So these ports are known as point to point ports. And then we have point to point are the age ports. So at the age, we have some ports. So the ports connecting single device or single point like computer or server, these specific ports are known as point to point port or point to point age port. Yes, simply age ports, okay, point to point age ports. And then finally we have also the shared ports and these are the ports which are connected to hub. And these ports are, are also known as shared ports because hub create shared ethernet and this port was in shared as well as you can say half to black more. So this, this, these were the sum of the differences which exist in FTP and, and RSTP and these were some of the characteristics which make RSTP faster in terms of convergence. So thank you, I hope some, some, some of these points I was able to make them clear. Um, thank you.